Hey y'all, Irix Guy here back again. Now the studio lights are extremely bright today and you can see as I'm filming this video how uh, hopefully crystal clear everything looks. But what I want to talk about today is the calendar year 2016 and the drones that have been exciting and have been disappointing so far for me in calendar year 2016. Now uh, one that immediately comes to mind, obviously we got the Phantom 4. Uh, the Phantom 4 I've been extremely satisfied with. Uh, one point of uh, pain and, and again something that's, that's nothing too serious, but I have encountered the Tilted Horizon issue with it, but like the Phantom 3 Pro, I was able to perform the IMU calibration and the compass calibration again and, uh, and everything was fine. But just a minor gripe here, I was hoping when the Phantom 4 came out that I wouldn't encounter the same troubleshooting challenges that I did with the Phantom 3 Pro. Uh, but from a gimbal stability perspective, Phantom 4 takes the cake. It's the best drone yet, in my opinion. It, uh, the gimbal on it, if you look at the bottom of it, it's more internalized. And it's just uh, the structural quality of the, of the craft itself is much better than the Phantom 3 Pro, in my opinion. With that said, the Phantom 3 Pro is great. You're getting 4K, 30 frames per second on Phantom 3 Pro, just like you do with Phantom 4. But I give a slight edge to the Phantom 4. Now... Also in this year, and I'd love to get my hands on one to, to just tinker around with it and see what it's like, but what keeps me from doing it is that it does look so similar to the DJI Phantom. You know, anytime I see something that, that closely mimics another product, doesn't mean that it's inferior, but it always raises questions in my mind. And since the Phantom 4 Pro has been so great, I haven't personally gotten my hands on the Alltel yet. Uh, you can check the link within this video's description. You can find all drones that I'm talking about. On 400 or below.com. That's 400 or below.com, and you can find all these drones. But yeah, the Alltel looks good on paper because it has a, uh, if you look at the specs, you'll notice that it's a, at least the one I was looking at, had a Sony Exmor based camera. So a Sony based camera. If you're like me, this, this camera that I'm filming with right now is a Sony. I love Sony. I love Sony and Carl Zeiss. I mean, they just, for me, the color separation, or you want to refer to it as saturation, whatever technical term you want to insert, where you're looking at a photo or a video and you can really see those colors and where they don't go together, it's really cool. And that's something I get out of Sony that I haven't, uh, and i played with a lot of different cameras. I'm sure there's some very high-end cameras that, that, would, that would trump this, but from my experience, Sony for drones and Sony for my studio. It's just been a great, uh, great combination for me. Now keep in mind, I mostly shoot in auto mode, and there's a lot of people out there laughing at me, like, man, you shoot in auto mode? Most of the time I do, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Now, when I'm doing still photos, I take it into manual, and I really dial in that focus and, uh, and the settings and make it look really good. But, yeah, I mostly do auto mode. Just it's convenient and it works. And that's what I do with my drones, my Phantom 3 Pro and my Phantom 4. I did pick up the Typhoon H, and if you've, if you've seen my videos, watch them, tell me what you think. I wanted a lot more from that drone. When I took it out of the box, I thought the Typhoon H was awesome. I liked the design. I liked the way the legs lifted up. How it was a carbon fiber type. I guess it was carbon fiber, the legs. Um, <laughs> as a piece of fur flying through the air. From Sean Coonery, the most famous cat in the world. Um, but, uh, yeah, there goes a phone ringing. I tell you, that's one thing, the studio gets to be a crazy place, and sometimes you just got to wait and say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sync up with whomever later. So, um, yeah, so the Typhoon H out of the box, really impressive looking. Again, I liked how the, uh, how the landing gear lifted up. I liked the way that the propellers that snap on and off. It reminded me of the Phantom 4. You know, very tactile feel, very nice tactile feel. Looked great. The controller itself, although large, it was thin. So it, it wasn't like if you've dealt with Parrot Bebop in the past where you got that massive sky controller with the Parrot Bebop. The, uh, the controller for the Typhoon H was not un unmanageable. Sure, it's a lot larger than a Phantom 3 Pro or a Phantom 4 controller, but it did have a screen already built in. And I will say the image quality of the screen on the Typhoon H controller looked really nice. It was very nice, and I liked how it included a sunshade out of the box. It's, it felt very nice. 
Uh, but unfortunately, when I, when I took it out in the field, uh, that's when I started to encounter problems. The camera quality for me was unfortunately subpar. A lot of my viewers said, dude, you got a, you got a bad camera. And I, and I hope that's the case because if it wasn't a bad camera, the, just watch my videos and see for yourself. The color is just not there. Compare one of those to a Phantom 3 Pro or a Phantom 4 video. And keep in mind, I use the exact same video editing workflow for all my 4K videos. And you can find that on 400 or below.com as well. It's my 4K video editing workflow. So I used everything the same and even the camera settings. I used auto settings on uh, auto 4K 30 on the Typhoon H just like I do with my Phantom 3 Pro and my, and my Phantom 4. So anyway, I was disappointed by that. The big deal breaker for me was the uh, defective micro SD card slot on the controller. I mean, it's just small things like that. I mean, I don't, I don't mind troubleshooting challenges. I've had plenty with Phantom 1 through present, no doubt. A lot of troubleshooting challenges. But with that being said, they were troubleshooting challenges. I, I didn't feel like I was dealing with, uh, with defective hardware. And that's, that's a different animal. I mean, I'm not, I'm not proficient enough to go in and repair a piece of hardware. But I may be able to go in and troubleshoot something from a software perspective. So, so with that being said, I mean, I've got uh, 2016. Some of the disappointments in 2016, another one was uh, the Lily camera. Lily camera, also people may refer to it as Lily drone. To my knowledge, it hasn't hit the market yet. And I know a lot of people, including myself, are excited about it because if you saw the, the little intro video, it was, uh, it was a situation where they're throwing it in the water and it would fly and this, that, and the other. It looked really cool, but where is it? GoPro Karma. I'm disappointed by the delay of GoPro Karma, but it may actually be a positive in disguise because it may signal that when GoPro Karma comes out that hopefully we'll see something that's revolutionary. You know, will it have a spherical camera, a 360 degree camera on it? Will it maybe have an 8K camera? Maybe just a 4K 60 frames per second instead of 4K 30? Time will tell, but hopefully the GoPro Karma will hit by the end of the year as expected because I have high hopes for that. I really like the GoPro company, despite the poor perception of their most recent product, which was GoPro Session. I didn't like that. They stepped out of their, out of their formula that was proven to work when they created the Session, in my opinion. So hopefully they get back to the goodness and create something great with the GoPro Karma, because my fingers remain crossed, optimistically crossed, because inevitably, DJI Phantom platform, the DJI Phantom platform does deserve some fair competition. We just haven't seen it yet. I mean, it's, it's a shame to say, well, which drone should I get? And everybody's like, man, get a DJI Phantom. Because when people say that, they're like, they sound like a fanboy. You know, they're like, they're just going after this one product. Like, there's nothing else because it's so much better. And from my observations, the, the unfortunate part is that the DJI Phantom platform is the best drone platform on the market today. So, will GoPro Karma break, uh, break through and, and create another option for people to consider? I mean, time will tell. I mean, I can only speculate based upon the uh, historical performance of GoPro and where I hope they're heading when they release GoPro Karma at the end of, at the end of calendar year 2016. Um, so with that being said, let's ask somebody else for their personal opinion here. Yes, you have Sean Coonery, the enormous Maine Coon cat. Hey, Sean Coonery, look in the camera. What is your personal favorite drone? He said, I prefer the DJI Phantom. But he said, I want something else that's up to scratch. Well, there you have it, Sean Coonery, the absolutely enormous enormous Maine Coon Cat given his opinion in regards to drones so there you have it only here on Irish Guys Adventure Channel youtube.com forward slash Irix guy he said don't do a forward slash when you're holding me he said you will lose your finger and possibly your head and everything because he is an enormous Maine Coon Cat and be sure to check him out on Maine Coon Mondays that's hashtag, oh, hashtag Maine Coon Mondays here on Irish Guys Adventure Channel, youtube.com 
forward slash Irick's guy. Thanks for watching and y'all have a good day. Oh, and check the link within this video's description. You can find all of the, uh, all of the drones that I just mentioned. Y'all have a good day. Hey all Irix guy here. I wanted to take a moment to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I'm an independent channel and it's viewers like you that help me to continue to grow. I appreciate your viewership and y'all have a good day.